Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. All praises to the Most High. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Which saying in the Paleo Hebrew, meaning Yahweh, the name of our Heavenly Father, meaning He is. Bahashem, meaning in the name Yahweh Shai, meaning He is our salvation. Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus a so called black man committing spiritual fornication committing spiritual fornication and what you seen was a spiritual fornication in the sense that people gather under a tree to pay homage and worship it okay and this is out of the book of jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1 and it reads, Hear ye the word which Yahweh speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. This is key. He's speaking to the house of Israel, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans here in the Western Hemisphere and to the rest scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth who look like the other nations, but go back to the Hebrew Israelites through the patrilineal lineage. Okay. This is verse one. It says, hear ye the word which Yahweh speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith Yahweh, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them. Right. And just by that clip alone, you see most of those people that were out there worshiping this Christmas tree were heathens people of other nations outside of Israel. But then the Israelites, you so-called black Latino and Native Americans want to hitch your wagon to the heathens and you want to go and do what? Do as the heathens do, you know, and worship the Christmas tree and the presents as well. So that's why it says, Hear ye, O house of Israel. Verse 2 then goes on to read, Thus saith Yahweh, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Okay? So we were given orders not to be dismayed and be, you know, at all, you know, such as, you know, worshiping a Christmas tree with decorative ornaments on it, you know, just symbolizing all type of spiritual fornication by, you know, Allowing yourself to submit to a tree. Okay. So this is verse three says for the customs of the people are vain. And that's right. That's just it. Their customs are vain. And we're going to go into that in Romans. It says for one cut of a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. And this is going into the Christmas tree in specific. It says, verse four, they deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. So these idols that these heathen worships they have no you know preeminence they can't do good they can't do evil they have no life in them they're just just that they're nothing okay so we were given instructions not to be you know dismayed at all but what do our people go and do they go and hitch their wagon to this kingdom this society and they follow after the ways of the heathens okay and we're going to go into that also. So now this is going into Wisdom of Solomon in uh, chapter 14. This is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14 and we go to uh, go to verse 12. It says, For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them the corruption of life. So our people, once we begin to follow after the heathens, and make these idols as you know things that we bow down to and worship we begin to commit spiritual fornication this was the invention following after the ways of the heathens being disobedient to the word 
This is what got us in the predicament that we in now. And we have not looked to turn back to repent, to change our ways. After being presented with the information, we still turn our heads. We are stiff-necked people, man. So that's why the judgment that's coming is going to be justifiable because the time that we had to repent, we took it and we discarded it as nothing. And we continue to wallow in our filth. So this is Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication and the invention of them, the corruption of life. Okay. And this is what's keeping a lot of our people from repenting because they are tied in with this spiritual fornication, following after the ways of the heathens. Now, this is going into Romans 1, and we're going to go down to verse 25. And it reads, Who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever? Amen. And that's the heathen. They took the truth of the Most High, saying that his son, Yahweh was born on Christmas so that they could be justified in worshiping their deities, such as Osiris, such as Semiramis, such as Tamu, depending on, you know, the culture. And what? They used the Christmas tree to solidify that. Okay? The rising of the star. That's why on top of the Christmas tree, you put that what? That star. Okay? This is all symbolic in the Babylonian, you know, comedic mystery, uh, school of mystery. These are the practices that they used that was passed down. And then the other heathens adapted it. And then us as a people, we hitched our wagons to it. And we started to what? Commit spiritual fornication and following after the ways of the heathens. That's why this book right now, this Holy Bible, is still relevant to the day because our people are still following after the ways of the heathen. That's what we were told not to. But see, that's all by design because only a select few of our people were going to actually turn back in these last days and repent and receive that complete uh, salvation. And to the rest, they're just going to have to get on the other side. So this is... Romans 1 and 25, it reads, Who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie? Uh, Jesus Christ was born on December 25th. When no way in the word are you going to get scriptures that substantiate that. On the contrary, it's going to do just that and say uh, otherwise. You know, he was born in a time where, you know, the sheep were out and they were you know, past, uh, pastoring and stuff like that. That's not out in the winter time. That's more towards the spring, you know? So you can see how the heathen, you know, turn and twist the scriptures to fit their narrative. So who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator? And that's just what you get with the tree. You serving a creature something that was made by the creator more than the creator. So it says, and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Those that can see and discern the times that we in and know that this is it. And you still choosing to serve the creature more than the creator. Then you have to go right along with the creature. Okay. So, in your ignorance, the Most High could wink. He could let that get by. But now with the truth being out and high volume as it is, there's no excuse. So the judgments that's coming is going to be justifiable by that in itself alone. This is Acts 17. Let's just go there and get it. And we're going to start at verse 20. Nine. So this is Acts 17 and verse 29. And it reads, For as much then as we are offspring of the Most High, we ought not to think that the Most High, and you go into that word, God said it can mean the Most High, which is Yahweh, or His Son, Yahweh Shai, or the Holy Spirit, okay? The Spirit of the Most High. is like unto gold or silver or stone, 
graven by art and man's devices. And when I say you go into that word, which here is God has, and the Greek is theos. So if you choose to emulate any one of those as an idol, it says, for as much then as we are offspring of the Most High, we ought not to think that the Most High, his son or the spirit is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. Right. So if you use gold, silver and try to put it at the same level as the Most High, his son or the spirit. You know, that's the art of man's device, because man will try. You see it. They'll they'll take a pendant, you know. This is in hip hop culture. And what do they use? They use that Jesus piece. You know, they put it in gold and they try to, you know, justify it by saying, oh, this is my Jesus piece. I'm showing homage to Jesus. Or they do the same thing with the cross. They go and they get, they get a piece of uh, gold and they put it in the form of a cross, you know, or silver. You know, they try to justify their works by saying, okay, we giving homage, you know, we paying our respect to the Most High or to Jesus, and we're using the gold and silver, okay? So in our ignorance, the Most High was able to wink at that, but now having full understanding, there's no excuse, okay? Because those are all things created by the creature, and we're not to show reverence to the creature over the creator. And that's why it says in verse 30, in the times of this ignorance, the Most High winked. Okay, he winked at our ignorance because we didn't know no better. Okay, but now that the truth is out, there's no ex there's no excuse other than you just like to wallow in your filthiness. It says, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So now we need to repent and turn back from those wicked ways and learn not the ways of the heathens. Okay, because this is all the society is about is being vain, putting yourself above the word. And worshiping yourself and worshiping idols. That's why we tearing down the strongholds, man, through this truth, okay? And Christmas is a stronghold to many. You know, they're not willing to let that go right along with Thanksgiving and New Year's. These are all things that our people can't seem to just let go for some strange reason, okay? And that's because they are marked with that destruction, okay? They're going to get that mark of not exemption. They're going to feel the full wrath of the Most High when he comes down on this land because they, when they had the opportunity, they didn't turn back and repent. That's why they're being set up for this uh, great day of the Lord, this judgment. Okay? Once that mark comes out, they're going to implement those people that can't seem to get let this system and let this place go. They're going to go down and take that mark. They're going to have to live with that grievance, that annoyance, and then upon that, they're going to get that judgment when those nuclear missiles come, those ICBM missiles to wipe out this whole land, this whole mass, which is Babylon the Great, America. OK, so this is all part of prophecy. So it says, for as much then as we are the offspring of the Most High, we ought not to think that the Most High is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art. And man's device, right? Because that's you worshiping the creature more than the creator. It says 30, in the times of this ignorance, the most high winked at. So he winked at us. He gave us time to repent. Okay. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Okay. All men is speaking on, like we read in Jeremiah 10, the house of Israel. Okay. We were the only ones that were afforded that ability to repent for the sins of our forefathers okay so learn not the ways of the heathens by committing spiritual fornication okay and that's exactly what these times that we are in is designed to do to have you commit spiritual fornications against the father okay so there's no excuse why you shouldn't be repenting and turning back from the ways of these heathens and being not dismayed other than that's just your lot. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and close out at 1 Peter 5. And we're going to take it from there.
This is 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, and it reads, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Okay? And that's his whole mission, is to walk and seek whom he may devour, who will not turn back and repent. So he continues to perpetuate these narratives that these are the holidays that we need to get together with our families and share the love. But throughout the rest of the year, you know, the hell with them. OK, but during this one time of the year, this is the time where we need to put all, you know, our feelings aside that we have towards our family, whether it's you no know, ill will or whatever it may be. And just get together for this one special moment or uh, this one special, you know, occasion throughout the whole year. OK, so by that narrative, if he gets you to, you know, worship the creature more than the creator then he's doing just what he needs to do to those who are marked for that specific lot. So that's why 1 Peter 5 and 8 tells us to be sober so we know not to fall in the you know, way of the heathen. It's, and it reads, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And that's just it. That's his job. His job is to get you to commit spiritual fornication. By worshiping in these idols, okay? You know, and the Christmas tree, along with the presents that's put up under, is the number one idol right alongside the cross that our people seem to have a hard time letting go. <laughs> because why? They tie their wagon, they hitch their wagon to this kingdom, this society, and they don't want to see it fall. They're not ready for the kingdom of heaven to come, okay? They want to continually stay in this world and wake up and do the same thing over and over and over. That's the mindset of the modern day Jake, man. He just want to continue to live this cycle on and on. He don't want to, he don't see things, go, he don't see things getting better than what it actually already is. To, them, to him, this is the pinnacle of the best it's going to get here in this kingdom. So just get used to it. That's the mindset. Okay, they don't, they don't have the mindset that the kingdom is right around the corner. There's a better, there's a better place than this that we currently inhabit. It. Okay, they don't see that. Okay, because they've been blinded, they've been put with the darkness. Okay, so pray that you continue to labor in this truth and endure to the end. So that you get your just reserve, your you know, your just dues. Okay. So with that being said, pray someone was edified. And if it be the Lord's will, until the next time, stay strong, stay in the faith. We almost home. Shalom.